A while ago, I had a Twitter poll for what theory to work on next, and Miss Peregrine's Home for Gifted Youngsters, or uh, Peculiar Children, tied for first place. And I am now ready to present to you the idea that Miss Peregrine is actually the true villain of the film. For those of you unfamiliar with this movie, it's a story about Miss Peregrine, a creature called an Embreen, who basically collects children with special abilities called Peculiars, <coughs> discount X-Men, <coughs> and then keeps them safe by resetting her magical stopwatch and having all her mutant wards relive the same day for as long as possible. The particular day being relived is September September 3rd, 1943, which they've been living since September 3rd, 1943, and Miss Peregrine's goal is to reset this 24-hour period called a loop forever. But there's a catch too. You can't just leave the loop or every hour you reset will catch up with you very quickly. Although it sounds lovely, doesn't it? To find a perfect day and experience it over and over and over again with no consequences, no aging, and no surprises. No, wait, actually, that sounds horrible. Could you imagine having to track the time to catch a squirrel from falling out of a tree every day for 74 years? And knowing that it doesn't matter what you do, everything will be erased when the loop goes back to hour one. These kids aren't a bunch of five-year-olds who are running and having the time of their lives playing and eating candy every day. Many of these peculiars are on the cusp of adulthood. They have romantic feelings towards each other other, yet they can never progress, grow up, or move past those radical teenage emotions. This sounds like a formula to make people go insane. And the movie doesn't deny this problem. Look at Enoch. Making crazy dolls to fight each other for entertainment like a twisted version of BattleBots? Not to mention, when Jake comes into the loop, Olive sets a pub on fire. Oh sure, you could say that she was trying to save Jake from being beaten up by the whale's locals, but no one was chasing them. Miller had already smashed up the pub and freaked everyone out. Plus, the kids had a horse carriage ready for a getaway. It actually wasted more time to start the fire than it would have to just run away. And when they get to the children's home, Miss Peregrine scolds them because she's had to kill the police and pub owner twice this month already. These guys are off their rockers crazy, and their loop has caused them to lose all regard for human lives. Even though that's a huge side effect to the loop life style, this theory goes deeper. Let's talk about some of Miss Peregrine's comments. She prides herself on being an embryon, saying their core mission is to care for young peculiars, but she also mentions that the peculiar gene is recessive and can skip generations, meaning, if you read between the lines, peculiar children are very hard to find, yet embryons collect them, no matter how mundane or easily hidden their powers are. Now, when Jake enters the loop and asks if if anyone ages, the answer is no, and it's best this way. But why? Who does that benefit? As a peculiar ages and their brains mature, that should help them control their powers and hide themselves, so I don't understand why it's best to keep them trapped as minors. Then at dinner, Miss Peregrine shows her hand again. She gets upset when the idea of marriage comes up, and she proclaims nobody is marrying anybody. Like, ever? I mean, if the teens in her care are falling in love and they actually age into adults, they'll be more likely to reproduce and create more peculiar children since they both have the recessive gene. Wouldn't that help embryons serve their purpose better? Miss Peregrine also snaps that they don't discuss the future, which came off like she didn't even want them to think about their futures either. So it's better to keep them young, don't talk about marriage, don't discuss the future. These kids are sounding more and more like prisoners to me. And when Horace is showing his dreams of the future, it depicts Emma and Jake getting close as if they're going to kiss. Miss Peregrine gets very annoyed by this and demands that the projection stops quickly. And let's not forget that this wasn't a perfect day to relive anyways. There's a hologas coming after them and a bomb plummeting towards them before the loop starts. Why not just reset that day once? and use that first 24 hours to get off the island when there would be 
no serious time repercussions. Aging one day while you escape? You wouldn't even notice that. Also, take note that Miss Peregrine doesn't actually eat. Look at the scene where everyone sits down for dinner. After serving all the miners, Miss Peregrine sits down to a completely empty plate. She does eventually reach out and grab a piece of, I think, turkey? And it does appear that she takes a bite, but the food falls right back out of her mouth while she pretends to chew. Oh yeah, and those creepy Slenderman hollows? They transformed into those monsters by experimenting with an inbrain and supposedly taking her powers. And the hologas return normal-ish by eating the eyes of peculiar children. Meaning, somewhere under their sweet headmistress facade, there is some serious messed up stuff going on with how these inbrains function. And their appearance becomes more normalized when young peculiars are involved. This relationship cannot be a coincidence. And shouldn't all the inbrains want their kids to grow up so that the hollows don't find them as desirable? There has to be a reason that inbrains want peculiars to stay young. Taking all of this into account, I have no choice but to believe that Miss Peregrine is not a sweet little nanny mutant bird time lord. She's more like a weeping angel that's surviving off of the years she's stealing from the kids. Now, that doesn't mean an inbrain doesn't grow to love her charges, but they are clearly being held captive. So make no mistake, inbrains aren't protecting kids for their own safety. They're caging kids as a way to sustain themselves. Yeah, I might be overthinking it, but that's literally my job. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. I get a lot of comments that say, do a theory on this topic, but I've already done those theories. So please consider going to my main channel page and clicking on the video tab so that way you can see everything I've done. You will probably find a lot of things you like that you never even knew that I posted. I want to let you know that I also have two other channels, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming, and the family family vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to hit subscribe and share. I can use all the help I can get to let other people know that this channel exists. And if you made it this far, leave me a comment that says something like, hey, I made it to the end. And then let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I can't make any promises, but the more people that request something, the more I can look into it. Okay, well, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.